The movie begins in 1992 in the yard of a house with a swimming pool. In the pool floats a toy boat, which is noticed by a girl from the window of the house. She promises her sick brother that she will get his toy, and then sneaks past the housekeeper who is leaving. Outside, the girl sees that the toy boat is lying on the bottom. She tries to get it with a net, coming closer and closer to the edge. Suddenly some entity grabs the net, and the girl loses her balance. Underwater, she sees her mother calling her, but when she surfaces, she discovers that no one is around. But a toy boat floats up behind her back. The girl swims to the middle of the pool where she takes the toy, but at that moment something grabs the girl and drags her under the water. The girl dives out and calls for help, but to no avail. The water swallows her completely, leaving only one slipper. The story shifts to the present day. Former baseball player Ray Waller, suffering from sclerosis, together with his family is looking for a new home to comfortably undergo treatment. The man doesn't like either option until he finds himself in a cozy suburb. Here the realtor shows the couple a house for sale. No one has lived in the house for a long time, it needs some repairs, but the Wallers like it. In the yard is a large pool covered with a canopy. Ray has dreamed of such a pool since childhood. When his wife Eve leaves, he reaches into the water for a baseball but, losing his balance, falls into the water. Entangled in the canopy, Ray imagines himself returning to the baseball team after recovering. After climbing out of the water, the man climbs to the side of the pool when a frightened family runs to him. Afterward, the spouses drive to a doctor's appointment. The doctor strongly recommends that Ray forget about professional sports and focus on restorative physical therapy, walking, yoga, and swimming. Ray and Eve realize they need to buy that house with the pool. The Waller family, along with their cat, soon move into their new home. While the husband unpack boxes, the wife screws the handrails on the stairs. Then the children head off to their new school. Izzy, the Waller's oldest daughter, meets a guy named Ronan, who invites her to join the school swim team. In the afternoon, the family is busy cleaning the pool. After draining the water, they clear leaves from the bottom while discussing their youngest son Elliot's baseball practice. While cleaning the drain hole, Ray puts his hand into it up to his elbow, but as a result receives a cut on his palm. After that, the job is left to the professionals. Pool cleaning specialists are surprised to realize that the pool receives its water directly from a natural spring. After cleaning the pool, the Waller family decides to take a swim in it. While Ray is doing physical therapy, Eve throws coins into the water for the kids to dive for them. Ray thinks about how quitting sports has made him spend a lot more time with his family. While sorting through old things in the garage, Ray finds a video camera with footage of him playing with the kids. Eve, meanwhile, is studying her husband's diagnosis while listening to lectures on her upcoming job. Late at night, Eve decides to go for a swim in the pool and notices a nervous cat on the edge. As she continues swimming, the woman sees Ray on the shore, but when she emerges from the water, her husband's figure disappears. At that moment, the pool light bulb blinks alarmingly. Back at the house, Eve complains to her husband about the malfunctioning pool light. When the couple goes to bed, the light bulb continues to blink, watched by the cat. In the morning, Elliot notices the cat's collar floating in the pool. Since the cat's body is not in the water, the family assumes that the pet escaped. Ray retrieves the collar while the rest of the family wanders the yard looking for the cat. Once inside the house, the man removes the bandages from his arm and is surprised to see that the cut is completely healed. Having failed to find the cat, Elliot leaves food on the doorstep. Ray and his son later install the canopy to cover the pool from leaves and debris. When they pull the canopy up, a diving Eve is left at the bottom, but it turns out to be just a scary dream. Upon waking up, Eve looks out the window and sees her husband engaged in a nighttime swim in the pool. When it comes time for another checkup at the hospital, the doctor can't believe that Ray's test results have improved dramatically. The Wallers believe it's all about the new diet and exercise. Ray continues to be active in swimming and exercise. He even records some videos to send the baseball team manager a video report on his fitness. His son asks to swim with him, but the man needs to exercise. Ray lets Elliot swim alone. Elliot attaches a painted coin to a toy and swims with it, not noticing the creepy shadow looming over the pool. Sitting underwater, the boy sees someone throw the coin into the water. Thinking that his father did it, Elliot dives out of the water to get his glasses, before diving back in and collecting coins that someone throws into the water. From the bottom, the boy sees a silhouette on the edge, which disappears when Elliot surfaces. Deciding that this sister is playing a joke on him, Elliot continues swimming, but soon notices a suspicious shadow above the springboard. 
Grabbing the springboard, he climbs up, but there is no one there. Suddenly, the boy hears the voice of a girl addressing him from the drain. The girl says her name is Rebecca and that she wants her toy back. Suddenly, a scary creature with long hair appears in front of Elliot. The frightened boy complains to his mother, but she sees no one. Discussing the incident with her husband, the parents come to the conclusion that Elliot has imagined everything. A few years ago, the son communicated with imaginary friends. The conversation of the spouses ends with a proposal to organize a party to get acquainted with the new neighbors. The family heads to Elliot's baseball practice. Ray, as a former pro, gives advice to the players while the coach pitches. Elliot is nervous, but after hitting the first pitch, he feels more confident. At the end of practice, the coach offers Ray a chance to show off his skills, and he agrees. However, Ray misses the ball twice and even falls down, unable to stay on his feet. On his third attempt, he remembers the relaxing waters of the pool. The man hits the ball, kicking it out of bounds with great force. Back home, Ray swims in the pool while Eve watches him suspiciously from the window of the house. One evening, the parents go out to dinner at a restaurant, leaving the children alone. Taking advantage of the opportunity, Izzy invites Ronan to swim in the pool. In the water, the teens play a game of Marco Polo. During the game, Ronan cheats and makes it to shore. Izzy dives under the water, thinking that Ronan is there, but comes face to face with a creepy drowned man and a spatial anomaly. The pool turns out to be much deeper than it appears. In a panic, Izzy swims to the surface of the water. Ronan doesn't realize what happened. According to him, Izzy just of underwater for a few seconds. The parents return home earlier than they intended, forcing Ronan to leave unnoticed. On the day of the party, Elliot blackmails his sister, threatening to tell parents that she brought Ronan home. Elliot wants to know what scared her in the pool, but Izzy asks him not to say anything to their parents. When guests arrive, the boy puts a video camera in the window of the house to film anything suspicious. The guests have fun swimming, sunbathing, and socializing. Izzy tells her new friends about her relationship with Ronan. Eve, slicing watermelon, learns from the realtor that 30 years ago a little girl named Rebecca, the daughter of the previous owners of the house, drowned in this pool. Meanwhile, Ray meets a boy from baseball practice who found a batted ball and asks the man to sign it as a souvenir. The former baseball player is overjoyed and offers to let the boy play with him in the pool. A lengthy confrontation during the game causes Ray to retreat to the deep end, submerging himself headfirst into the water. But when the boy drops his opponent into the water, Ray still doesn't surface. A black slurry comes out of the drain hole and crawls right into Ray's mouth. Ray freezes underwater, clutching the boy's legs around his neck and drags him down to the depths. Elliot sees the boy go underwater from the window and runs down to warn the adults. The men dive into the pool, pulling out an unconscious Ray and the boy, who is left with large bruises on his legs. The party ends with the police arriving. The parents of the injured boy agree not to file a police report, blaming the incident on Ray's illness, but in return they demand that Ray no longer come to the teenager's baseball practice or go near their children. A frustrated Eve suggests moving out of the house, away from the damn pool. As the Wallers drive away, Ray is suddenly struck by a bout of illness. The Wallers have to return home to put Ray to bed. But instead of resting, he asks to be taken to the pool, and when Eve refuses, Ray smiles strangely and says it's very cold at the deep end. Eve then decides to drain the pool. The next day, Eve googles information about the previous owners. It turns out that many people have died and disappeared under strange circumstances in this house over the last hundred years. After learning the address of the previous owners, the woman goes to their home, where she is greeted by an elderly woman. The woman invites Eve into the house and tells her about her wonderful and successful son. When it comes to the house with the pool and the drowned girl, the woman mysteriously replies that she didn't have a daughter, only a son. Eve talks about her concern about the pool's strange effect on Ray. The old woman coughs, wiping black sludge from her eyes, and tells an old legend about a miraculous spring that can grant any wish. But in return, the spring demands payment, a human life. And that's exactly what happened to Rebecca. The spring took Rebecca's life and in return cured her brother. And her mother was well aware of what she was doing. Eve asks how the terrible curse can be prevented, but the woman begins to cough violently. When she turns around, black sludge flows from her eyes. Smiling, the older woman says it will soon be over. The spring will definitely take its victim. The guest runs away in a panic, trying to call her husband on the way. Eve doesn't yet know that a black slurry has come out of the shower drain and taken over her husband's mind. Back home in the evening, Elliot sees that the water in the glass is vibrating. 
He goes out into the yard, hoping to find the cat, not noticing the glass moving on the table. Hearing a squeak, the boy sneaks along the springboard to the inflatable ring, believing that the cat is on it. But instead, an evil entity drags Elliot underwater while some unseen force opens the pool's canopy. Izzy notices that her brother has fallen into the water and tries to help him. The mother who appears tells Izzy to call Ray and dives into the pool herself. However, her son is nowhere to be seen. Strapping on a hose, the woman dives underwater again, using the hose as a breathing tube. She finds Elliot floating unconscious and drags him to the top. They are attacked by the spirits of the dead people and it seems they will never reach the surface of the water. At this moment, Rebecca's ghost appears. She unclasps her palm with Elliot's coin, which shows the right direction. Noticing the light, Eve and her son swim to the surface. Izzy meanwhile, hurt by a broken glass, searches for his father. Ray suddenly appears with his face stained with slurry and beats his daughter so that she does not call for help by phone. The girl manages to escape and hide in the garage. Grabbing a baseball bat, Izzy stealthily follows her father into the street. Ray grabs his wife, who tries to save Elliot. Izzy attacks her father and hits him hard several times with the baseball bat. Out of surprise, he spits out a black slurry. Ray sees his wife, remembers the best moments of his life, and finally regains consciousness. Elliot also regains consciousness. The family wants to escape from the cursed house, but a thick black cloud appears in the pool and Elliot gets worse. Ray realizes that the pool needs a victim, turns around and goes down the steps into the water. He asks his family not to look, then plunges headfirst into the water and swims straight into the blob of darkness. Elliot finally gets better, but immediately afterward the black liquid disappears along with Ray's body, leaving only clear water in the pool. The next day, Elliot watches one of his father's videos. Eve examines the empty pool, then hands her son a smiley face coin. The surviving Wallers stand on the edge of the empty pool, about to leave this place for good. But in the end, they decide to stay in the house so that no one else will fall victim to the evil entity. Eve, Izzy and Elliot bury the pool to make sure something like this never happens again.